Hey, hey, hey everyone, I'm Rosie with K15T and welcome back to our Confluence Beginner Guide, where you'll learn Confluence from start to finish. Last week, we covered why you should be using Confluence, how it works, and how exactly to create your Confluence site. Our goal for today is to help you understand the general interface as well as spaces within Confluence. After watching this video, you should feel confident in navigating throughout your site, and you should also feel confident in what a space is and how exactly to create one. So let's begin by jumping right back to where we left off last time. So here we are again. This is your overview, which we'll refer to as your dashboard overview. It's like your home of Confluence. There's already some content here, as you can see, which is just Confluence helping you out. So up top here, you have your navigation bar, which will always be visible. Here on the left, you have your nine dot menu that lets you quickly jump to other Atlassian sites or products such as Atlas, Jira, or Bitbucket. Then right here, you have your Confluence button and your Home button, which are essentially the same things, and they will always just bring you back to where we are right here. Then next, you have your Recent button, and your Recent button is just going to take you to anywhere that you've recently been. So you have right now, you can see we haven't been anywhere, so it's not showing anything. Then you have your Work Done, Created by Me, any pages that you're going to star. This is really helpful for pages that you're constantly coming back and visiting. Uh, I use it all the time personally. Then you also have a little area for any drafts that you're working on. So as you can see, I opened something up a few days ago, um, just didn't even do anything on it, but it's still there in that little drafts list. Then you have this button for spaces and you can view all your existing spaces here. You can create a space here. You can also click on operations and go into another space and then it'll also display the current space that you're in. So let's go back to home. Then you have your Teams button right here and your Teams button is gonna display your collaborators. Right now we don't have any collaborators, but we can invite people and we can create a team or we can search the people that will eventually be on our site with us. Then you have your little apps drop down. We don't have any apps yet, we just installed the site. So that's why we don't have anything yet. Once you do install something, it'll show up right here. You can also connect it to your apps, find new apps, manage apps, all that good stuff. Then you have your templates area right here. This will take you to a view of all the templates that are available. Here you can sort through all the ones that Confluence already offers you. And then you can also save custom templates, which we don't have yet since we just started. Then lastly, on the left side of the navigation bar, you have the create button, which is probably the most important button within Confluence. This is where you're gonna create all the content that you are working on. And then over here on the right side, since we're in the free version right now, this is where we could upgrade. Then you have your search bar, and this is where you can search through any content within your Confluence site. It's super helpful if you're just like, oh, I need to search something about this one product or this one app. And then you just search keyword and it'll take you to all the pages. It'll display everything that that content is in. You have your notifications here. You're going to get your at mentions. You're going to get your comments. You're going to see if anybody has edited a page that you are the owner of. Uh, obviously, we don't have any notifications yet just because we just started, as you all know. Over here, we have the help bar. This is going to be a lifesaver in the beginning of your Confluence journey. Here, you can go directly to Confluence support and find any articles that you need. Maybe you want to know, how do I change the space to something else? Or how do I make a page public? Or how do I do any of that? This is all going to be right there in the support and we'll also guide you through it as well. Then you can go down. Our favorite part of the help button right here is going to be this keyboard shortcuts. And this will show you all the little shortcuts that are going to save you time when creating and just using it in your daily workflow. You can also view keyboard shortcuts by just hovering over an action and the keyboard shortcut will display. So right here, I'm hovering over notifications. It's saying, oh, just press G and N simultaneously and it'll show you that. Or for the search bar, you just press the forward slash and you're already searching. Then over here, you have the Confluence Administration button. This button, you're just gonna see if you are the admin of a space. So I'm the admin of this one. Otherwise, you're just gonna see over here, you'll have your profile and your account drop down menu. This is where you can, you know, manage your account, uh, set your light theme, dark theme, set your profile picture, all that good stuff. Here on the left, you have your sidebar. And when you're in the dashboard overview, like we are now, it will display the options for you to view your recent pages, view your starred items, your drafts, and your tasks. Further down here, you'll see your list of spaces. 
In the previous video, we learned that spaces are virtual containers to organize your content pieces such as pages, blogs, whiteboards, and smart links. We'd recommend using one space per team, per product, or per department, and so on. You can create as many spaces as you need. So let's go ahead and create a space. We see here this list of pre-existing spaces, but now it's time to add more spaces to align with our needs. For example, I want to have a space exactly for product documentation. So you can create a space by hitting the little plus button right here, or we can go up to the part in the navigation bar and click create a space. Then once you're here, Confluence is going to go ahead and suggest some templates that might help you out. And since I want to create a space for product documentation, I'll go ahead and start with this template. Then hit next and we'll choose an icon to represent whatever we'd like for that space. I'll go ahead and click this one right here. No reason behind it. You could also upload an image, totally up to you. Then to name your space, I'm going to go ahead and just type clever app. You can have two spaces with the same name. However, we don't recommend it. It'll just get more confusing down the road. And then for additional options right here, we can do permissions. So since this space won't have any private information, I'm completely okay with default permissions. And there's the ability to change this later on if needed. Then there's this section right here to identify the space with a space key. This is a unique identifier that will be a part of your space's URL. And if you don't choose a space key, one will automatically be generated just like it is here. And then by hitting create space, and it's gonna take us right to the space that we just created. And as you can see, it's already popping up right here in our list of spaces. And because I'm gonna be visiting this space so regularly, I'm gonna go ahead and star it, and then it is add to my starred list. And you can see, since we're currently in that space, it's right there in the current. So we're now in the space overview, not to be confused with the dashboard overview that we were in earlier. However, they do look very similar. Here on the left in the sidebar, you'll notice your content tree. And the content tree displays all the unique content that lives within your space. Once you start creating content, such as pages, whiteboards, or smart links, the sidebar will grow and reflect that. Within the sidebar, you can find different options from top to bottom. Let's go ahead and go through them. All content right here gives you an overview of all the content that's in your space. You can change the display of it over here, you can sort through it, and you can also search by title. Then next you have the blog section, and every space in Confluence has its own blog section. A blog in Confluence is like a typical blog anywhere else and is the perfect way to communicate news, updates, or any other information that would be suitable for a blog post. Then over here next you have automation, and this is just for premium and enterprise plans, but here you would be able to create automations for your space, for things like creating or deleting pages, or even to notify somebody if a certain event happens in your space. The possibilities here are truly endless. Next, you have calendars. And again, this is just for premium and enterprise plans. The calendar app is designed specifically with Confluence to merge all the team member calendars into one to have a better overview of your team's schedule. Then you can go ahead over here to space settings, and this is only available for space admins, which by default is the person who created the space. Here, you can manage your entire space. You can edit the sidebar, you can export your space, you can look through the things that have been deleted by going through the trash, you can change the look and feel. There's a whole lot to do over here. Generally, within a space, there's a whole lot to discover, but the most important part is to share knowledge, and that's done within the content tree over here. The content tree itself can be filtered, it can be searched, and it can also be collapsed. You can move content around simply by dragging and dropping it and putting it into other sections to give you this little ripple effect. To view the content, you just simply click on it. It really couldn't be easier. And then if you go ahead and click on your space again, this will take you to the space homepage. The space homepage should be used to introduce the space and its purpose. In this case here, we want to introduce the product and provide a small overview of what exactly can be found in this space. So today we've learned how to navigate through Confluence, how to create a space, and what exactly a space consists of. Now we're ready to fill our space with content. In the next tutorial, we'll show you what it takes to make a good page and how exactly to create one. Additionally, we'll dive into the Confluence editor and all the details that come within that. Until then, go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons so we can keep helping you and you can focus on what you do best. Thanks for watching.